Price. Joining us now to review some of the headlines in today's newspapers from around the world is Arise News analyst Emmanuel Efeni. Good morning, Mr. Efeni. Good morning, Leila. Good morning, Ruben. Good morning. Yes. We'll start with these day newspapers as usual. The lead story, Central Bank of Nigeria assesses funding requests for Nigeria-made COVID-19 vaccine. 248 new cases bring tally to 4,399 with 778 discharged, 143 dead. Federal government increases testing laboratories to 23 by adding three new more laboratories. COVID pledges more support for PPEs, PPE producers. Lagos, FCT, Borono, Kano discharge 82 more patients. Rivers demolishes two hotels. Lagos uh, for flouting uh, restriction order. NJC approved online sitting of courts nationwide. Yes, the lead story itself, um, the central bank assessing well, the, the claims and the potentials, if you will, to produce uh, COVID-19 vaccines in Nigeria. And I think that is a good direction to be looking at at this point in time, because we've been producing vaccines in the past in this country. Somehow, Certainly. we allow that capacity perhaps to go away, and um, we've not been putting in enough money into research. We still have the experts, the institutes that uh, pursue this area of research are still there, not properly funded, perhaps. So it's a good thing that we cannot be left behind in the search for cure or a vaccine for COVID-19 uh, uh, vaccine. We cannot be uh, at the backwaters of research and just wait for others to do the research. We should contribute because we have the experts. So it's a very good uh, direction the CBN is looking at, assessing uh, the request of uh, Nigeria-made COVID-19 vaccines. Well, I think it's uh, interesting to hear that uh, there is an effort to uh, come up with a vaccine in Nigeria. Before now, what we have been hearing as mm -hmm. part of the conversation uh, in terms of Nigeria's contribution uh, to the war against uh, COVID-19 has been herbal therapeutic uh, remedies, either in uh, Oyo State, where the governor has held meetings with some researchers at the University of Ibadan, mm -hmm. or at the uh, federal level, where there was a meeting between the Department of Complementary and Alternative Medicine of the Federal Minister of Health and NAVDAC officials with 35 phytomedicinal uh, experts or, you know, uh, representations that have been made uh, to the federal government by the likes of uh, Father Anse Madudo of Pass Abal Clinic, uh, Professor Maurice uh, Iwu, mm -hmm. Dr. Paul, Paul Ujay of uh, Iris uh, Medical Foundation, uh, Okoluyu, and all these other, you know, herbalists. So if there is, a, you know, a drive by the central bank to invest in science, I think that that is important, and I think it should be encouraged, because on this program, we've always talked about research and development. That is one. Now, the, uh, this day story says uh, 248 new cases bring tally to 4,399 with 778 discharge, 143 dead. I made the point before you joined us that it looks like the death rate is going up. In some other countries, like South Africa, like uh, um, Ghana, the death rate, even Egypt, the death rate is not so high. In terms of cases, we are at the same level with Egypt. Mm. Now, I bet you may say that, okay, we have the largest population. Yeah, death yes. by population. You may say this is relative to, to our population. population. But the truth of the matter is also that we are not testing enough. Mm. Our testing rate is above 22,000, right, so far. Now, our uh, capacity to test per million is just a little over 100. So compared to these other countries in Africa, we are not testing enough. Mm -hmm. So we see a spike, not just in the death rate. So what is it that we are not doing right? What is it that we need to learn from those other countries? 
Do we need to do a lot more in terms of uh, sensitization? Do we need to do a lot more in terms of testing? Even if you look at the infection rate, the infection rate has gone up. Yes. Ghana recorded a slight spike in mm. its infection rate, but we have overtaken Ghana. These are some of the uh, indicators yes. you know, that Nigeria yeah. needs to look at. But in terms and then locally, just one more point, yes. and then I will leave the matter. If you look at the COVID-19 league table in Nigeria, you will see that the first 12, if you rank them in the order of confirmed cases, yes. you have... Uh, I think Lagos and Ogun, within that first 12. Every other state is from the north, either the northwest or the northeast. But, mm. Now, we need to pay attention to what is going on in the northeast and the northwest, particularly as we had reports that there have been unexplained deaths mm -hmm. in uh, Yobe, in uh, Azare, uh, uh, area yes. of uh, Bauchi State. We have 105 persons. Uh, well, the, some people even say the number is as high as 300. 100, yeah. The state government says it's about 30. But whatever it is, right, we need to worry about this unexplained death mm. in certain parts of the country. Especially as they are consistently well, being linked to hypertension and, like we always say, other symptoms that are coupled with coronavirus. But what you said about the death rate going up is very true because reports also showed that within the first week of May, what we saw in Nigeria was a 50 percent increase in our death rates, which is quite alarming. So we do need to pay attention and look at our strategy and wonder whether we're going about this in the right way. Well, also looking at the dead, the dead in this case, the number, uh, perhaps if we have more information about those who have died, whether there are people with underlying ailments, whether there are older people who are usually more susceptible to dying from COVID-19 uh, uh, virus infection than younger people. So we also need to have that picture to make uh, any definite uh, pronouncement as to the number of deaths. Yes, well, of if, course, if, the, any, if you permit me. Yes. Uh, Part of the story you read out is uh, Rivers demolishes two hotels for flouting restriction order. Yes. I don't know whether, you know, we can comment on that. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, since you have raised it, we won't, we won't uh, leave it since you have raised it. Because, um, to be fair, that is a very drastic way to uh, punish somebody. That hotel could have been closed for the next one year, even after COVID-19, and that building will be standing. In a country where we don't uh, easily build houses, um, it's so expensive, everybody struggles to build a house. You don't, you, you don't have the kind Speak of... for yourself. Yes. Uh, for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, compared, no, compared, compared to what uh, we have, uh, about, where you can, just, you can just uh, mm -hmm. get a mortgage and you are a house owner. No, it's I, unacceptable. Yes. And what we have seen in so other states is unacceptable. You cannot just uh, go... I don't even want to go into the legality or the power. You, even if you have the powers, you don't abuse the powers. Yes, the governor has been all over the place. He has been proactive because you're asking why would we have so much spike in the north compared to the south. One of the reasons is because somebody like Wiki has also gone out of his way to be a policeman. <laughs> policing the airport, policing the streets, and declaring a total lockdown of two local government when there was this case of disobedience to the general lockdown. So. There's a lot to get uh, from that uh, wiki saga. Yes, you hit him hard in some areas, but you also give him uh, some credit for being a policeman, taking the battle to every nook and cranny of River State. To be sure, and, uh, you can see the figures. They are, they are, they are, you are defending they the governor acting ultra virus. No, Proactiveness abusing, over reactiveness. No, I've, I've, I've talked Proactiveness about... Proactiveness uh, over reactiveness. <laughs> and what we have seen from Governor Wike is reactiveness. What we need to see more of is proactive but where behavior. Is, where is Rivers in the table? Up or down? They well, are somewhere, they are somewhere yeah, down. That, above 60... Confirmed. Yes, yes, but that's in, in the table in Nigeria. Well, the good news is down. a testing laboratory has also been put into River State now, yes. I believe, as yeah, well. We Three more laboratories. Three testing yes. laboratories. Yes. With the additional one in Edo and another one in uh, Rivers. Yes. yes. That was disclosed at the briefing yesterday. Mm -hmm. Definitely will help with our testing capacity. Yeah, okay, let's look at other newspapers. The Nation newspaper, Madagascar's COVID 19 cure drug 
sent to Nigeria. Mm. NAVDAC orders to carry out analysis before testing. Governors seek volunteer health workers to battle virus. Yes, Madagascar well, seem to have taken a, a front row in the fight against uh, COVID-19, especially in the African continent. Okay. With that... Uh, um, COVID organics. Yes, COVID so. organics. Ruben would like to call it concoction in Nigeria, <laughs> but this is COVID organics. Well, it is a concoction. <laughs> you know, but I like that, that sleek name. COVID, so, COVID organics. Correct. You know, Let us be reminded yes. that the World Health Organization has not endorsed the COVID organics mm -hmm. uh, produced by uh, Madagascar and enthusiastically promoted by the president of that country, Andy uh, Rogelina. Um, well, it's good to talk about but African solutions. Is it working in Madagascar? Well, African solution to African problems. The only evidence we have is that, yes, we're told that it is working uh -huh. in uh, Madagascar where no deaths have been recorded. Ruben, if and, I may just interject. And also no, in Equatoria Guinea. If I may just interject before you continue. Okay. There are other medications being used which the World Health Organization has not made any pronouncement. As long as they are working, they are being used. So perhaps we should add this to the mix. Yes, uh, you are talking about herbal concussion. Yeah. <laughs> and WHO is saying that this has not been scientifically tested yet mm. and approved. You know, it has not gone through global clinical research cycle. But let's take a break, commercial break, and then when we return, we'll continue with Madagascar and its herbal concussion. Welcome back to the morning show here on the Arise News channel. Emmanuel Efeni, Arise News analyst, is still here with me and uh, Leila, uh, reviewing top stories uh, from newspapers from around the world. Now, uh, Efeni, before we went on break, I was commenting on uh, Madagascar. There's no doubt that uh, the uh, Haber concussion, known as you mean uh, COVID the, organics. You mean the Haber mix? <laughs> yeah, well, if you like, <laughs> Haber mix, if you say so. You know, uh, we earn a lot of foreign exchange for Madagascar, particularly as uh, many countries in Africa are already importing uh, the herbal remedy. Um, we have uh, Senegal that took mm. the lead, Democratic Republic of Congo, Congo Brazzaville, Guinea Equatorial, um, Chad yesterday took delivery, and in Equatorial Guinea, the president already even made a public statement that uh, persons have been killed from just drinking uh, that herbal remedy that is based on uh, uh, a plant called Atemisa. Yes. And now we're told that Nigeria is also going to uh, import uh, COVID organics from Madagascar. In fact, the uh, chairman of the PTF about two weeks ago said he had discussed with his wife, and his wife had suggested that he should recommend to the president that Nigeria should also get that type of remedy. I understand that the Nigerian consignment is in uh, Equatorial Guinea. Well, we uh, will soon get here. Yes. You know, Malabo is just next door. Yes. Mm. However, you know, uh, what those who support alternative medicine say is that we should not rule any option out mm -hmm. and that Africa should not stay behind in the race to find a, a solution. You know? I'm sure That's you'll be happy with that. True. No, and it, I'm sure it, when COVID organics from Madagascar gets here, you would like to have a taste. Well, Even if you are already looking forward to look, it. Look, Ruben. <laughs> After NAFTAC approvals. <laughs> you, have, you have finally arrived at the appropriate uh, nomenclature. Herbal remedy. That's what it is. <laughs> Not a concoction. My only confusion with this is that last week we had reports from the ECOWAS Commission coming out to say that they hadn't supported Madagascar's herbal remedy or concoction. But now what we are seeing is that ECOWAS countries are actually importing... Senegal, mm -hmm. Chad. Look, exactly. So isn't Toria. that they have retracted on their look, statements? Or I'm a bit look, confused. Lila, that was an unnecessary pronouncement mm. that the, uh, the ECOWAS... They have not supported mm. this. It was an unnecessary uh, pronouncement. No, but you know, ECOWAS but it was a has, pronouncement. Yes, ECOWAS has a body. Yes, a West African uh, Public Health Organization. You know, which had issued protocols yeah. on how to manage COVID-19, just as the African Union has the African Center for Disease Control. Mm -hmm. So that was done under the auspices of uh, 
you know, that public yeah, health. But I think they should have gone for mm. check, done uh, proper testing, and uh, before coming out with any pronouncement. <laughs> but now the countries have gone ahead and um, it's it. It's worth a try. Yes, it really worth is worth a try. I think our people just Especially, want, no. our people just want to drink anything. No, no, no. At least <laughs> NAVDAC will do the needful other research institute will also exactly. look at what is uh, uh, what is all about you, you before, it can even be, before they can endorse it for consumption. Mm -hmm. But in the global trend is to look for a vaccine mm -hmm. to solve this problem. And there have been conspiracy theories around that uh, search for a vaccine. As I pointed out, when we had SARS, when we had MERS, uh, you know, the Chinese, they looked at uh, mm -hmm. alternative medicine options. 200 uh, kinds of options were submitted. And at the end of the day, you know, they couldn't endorse anyone. So mm -hmm. the thing is, whatever solution that is offered should be subjected to a research cycle. Yeah, so mm -hmm. nothing should be ruled out, actually. Yes. Let's move on. Now, the Punch newspaper, home treatment will increase infections. NMA nurses warn. World Health Organization opposes treatment in crowded homes. Critical case won't be treated at home. Lagos State Government, three patients positive, but 14 Abuja doctors, nurses in isolation. Now, there is this uh, option yeah. of treating some people at home if theirs is not a very a serious case by way of their, the symptoms they exhibit. Mm. But again, that is being a question uh, because that uh, fellow may be a danger to other people who live around. It's not suitable so, for everyone, and that's yeah. the honest truth. You know, so, some people with 12 to 15 in a room can't work, you know? So <laughs> perhaps we are exploring that option because we are also anticipating that at a point mm -hmm. we may have a shortage of bed spaces to treat every identified COVID-19 patient. But ahead of that, I think we should just keep on expanding our mm -hmm. facilities and getting more facilities. Mm -hmm. That's what other countries do, uh, did uh, when uh, they got to that situation. Other countries also had to recommend self-isolation at home to people who can. Now, obviously, this is not an option that is going to work for every household at home. When you are suspect, you suspect. Or when that. you have a mild case yes. as well, some countries yes. did. It can't work for everyone. It cannot work for everyone. Some people that are living in a house that is crowded, it is not recommended. However, if you're living in a house whereby there's one or two in the house, let's say, and you, can't, you don't need to take up a bed at the hospital, then it can be recommended. So I don't think it's as black and white as self-isolation at home or no self-isolation at home. I think it should be dependent on people's different situations, what kind of home they're living in and what they're being exposed to. Okay. The Daily Trust is also looking at another aspect. Outcry, the Daily Trust. Outcry as Nigerians wait for one week to get COVID-19 result. Drivers from Nasarawa Undo infected while ferrying samples. Tales of woe from Benue, Kebi, Abuja, Gombe. Nigerian trails behind Ghana, South Africa, others. Samples, distance, determine result time, NCDC. Yes, this is a problem because um, where some of these centers are from this, uh, various states, it's quite distant. You take a test, you have to travel from Akwaibom to Irwa, perhaps the nearest uh, lab in that axis. Um, still not good enough. So if the NCDC, yes, they've increased their the labs to 23, but at least we should have one in every state of the federation. Should be the that government. is not too much to ask for. No, the, the NCDC had made it clear previously mm. that it is not possible to have a laboratory in every state. What has happened, of course, is that they have 23 laboratories across the country. But the problem, of course, is the turnaround time. I mean, at a point, Nigeria was even sending samples to South Africa. We have improved considerably, and that's why we see the numbers going up, because more testing is being done. Hopefully, uh, uh, they have not told us yet. I hope they've been able to address the concern about the lack of testing kits in uh, the FCT, and also particularly in Lagos, Regions and also in, in, uh, and also in uh, Kano. Yeah, but <clears throat> the truth of the matter is that the turnaround time takes a long time. Yeah. You send a sample from Gumbe to, uh, to Abuja, because there's no testing laboratory in Gumbe, for example. 
Now, it takes a total of more than 14 hours for you to be able to get any result at all. Now, that's not good enough. Now, Nigeria says it doesn't want to do rapid testing. In some other countries, like the uh, UAE, uh, like Ghana, what they do is rapid testing. They have these rapid testing yes. days. And Nigeria has said, no, we will not do rapid testing. We will do, according to Mr. Ihani, uh, Minister Ihaniri, what he calls smart testing. Yes. But it's just that the smart testing takes a much longer time. So maybe that's part of the strategy that, no, you know, the NCDC and the Ministry mm -hmm. of Health will have to take a second look but at. But is it too much to expect that between every state government and the federal government to have one testing lab in each state of the federation? I don't, think, to I don't think it is. Of a nation like Nigeria? I don't think it is too much to be expected. However, let's also look at our progress. About? We started off with three testing labs when COVID-19 hit Nigeria. We're at 23 testing labs now. I believe the NCDC will get there. Because look at it, they're starting, they're expanding. We're at 23, just a couple more to go and we're there. So I have belief that we will get there. We need it at this point, so. Okay, let's move over to it. Well, it's not yeah. just about having the uh, testing laboratories. Having the capacity Molecular, to test. Uh, laboratories, as they call them, or is it mm. PCR laboratories, as they call them. But the truth of the matter is that you also need personnel. Yeah. You also need reagents. Yeah. You need the kits. And there's a global shortage you know, of reagents. There's a shortage in that regard that we're already experiencing. You also need the expertise. Yeah. And we don't seem to have enough uh, in Nigeria at the moment. Okay. All of these are issues that I, uh, that I, you know, uh, face front yes. and that can be addressed, given the right strategy the issues in the and the right corner. level okay. of commitment. Yes. Now, let's move on to the foreign newspaper. The UK newspapers are reporting uh, the steps towards uh, unlocking the United Kingdom. And let's start with the Times of UK, the Times. Prime Minister set out lockdown exit plan. Time to restart economy, says Johnson. Three month roadmap to open schools and shops. Exercise rules relax with three steps. Now, the Daily Telegraph simply call it the long road to freedom. Yes, that's uh, the Daily Telegraph, the long road to freedom. Why the, uh, the Daily Mail calls it uh, its lead story? Boris keeps handbrake on. That's the Daily Mail. Now, the three steps, uh, according to Boris Johnson, which he ruled out uh, um, yesterday, one, that return to work and uh, greater freedom to exercise this week. Those who can return to work are encouraged to do so right away. While um, two primary schools and more non-essential shops would open in June. Then, of course, step three, Open air cafes, cinemas, churches could also reopen in July. So these are these are the steps effective from Wednesday. Well, carefully choreographed, but whether it will be so implemented, it's well, so it's to be seen. The immediate reaction is to say that uh, Prime Minister Boris Johnson has been uh, very extremely cautious, and that the three steps that he has uh, talked about. Um, we seem confusing and divisive. Uh, that's the message from Scotland and Wales and mm -hmm. even Ireland mm -hmm. and even from the Labour Party yeah. uh, with Sir Kestama saying that, look, it, what the uh, Prime Minister has proposed has left people more confused than ever. So confused. Because what he's proposing is that you can do exercise. And Sunday. You know, uh, they have changed the message from stay home to stay alert. Stay alert means... You know, if you can go, to, if you can go to work, go to work, go but to be work. careful. Mm -hmm. But if you cannot be careful, stay at home. You know, <laughs> and then you can exercise. You know, when you can. But more details, we're told, will be provided by uh, Monday, by today, uh, by the uh, Prime Minister. Clear up the shades of grey. See how that works. Yeah, Mr. Fanny, thank, thank you very you. much, Manuel. See you tomorrow.